You guys don't know this, obviously, because I've never told you before, but I'm a chemistry major. <laughs> what a nerd. And yep, it's exactly what you expect. I study everything from how different molecules are formed, how to set up and use various kinds of lab equipment, and how to live my entire life without ever holding a single girl's hand. I'm waiting till marriage. So naturally, an anime about a boy having to use the power of science, specifically chemistry, to revive an entire human civilization piqued my interest to say the least. And after finishing watching it a few months ago, I can confidently say that Dr. Stone has become my favorite anime of all time. If you've been living under a rock, <laughs> get it, and don't know what Dr. Stone is, it's an anime released in the summer of 2019. Oh, how the days were so much better back then. Which was originally serialized in 2017 when the manga came out. As I mentioned before, the story follows a boy genius named Senku, who, along with the rest of the human population, experiences an otherworldly phenomenon that leaves all of them petrified for thousands of years. 3,700 to be exact. Obviously, judging by the cover of the anime and him being the MC, Senku awakens after almost four millennia of being a rock, and begins his journey to find out the truth behind the petrification. A few months after his awakening, his big and bulky bonobo of a friend Taiju also awakens. Now together, Brain and Brawn, Senku tells Taiju that he plans to revive all of humanity. In my opinion, Dr. Stone has a really cool story and a really unique way of approaching that story. While most animes try to cater to that one awkward kid in middle school, Dr. Stone knows that in order to cast a wide net of audiences, it has to appeal to the modern majority of people. Gamers. Now I'm sure all my fellow gamers, gamers know this feeling. You spend hours upon hours grinding to get something in a game, and once you do, the instant rush of dopamine hits you harder than the whip from your dad's leather belt. Dr. Stone has taken this proven formula from video games and applies it almost throughout the entire anime. Every time Senku makes a new discovery or invention, it feels like he's obtaining a new item or skill in a video game. The anime even gives you this little achievement message every time he does it. And we, as viewers, passively watching, also get to experience that secondary high. The inventions that Senku make aren't random either. There's a noticeable progression to them that makes sense when you're starting from nothing. Without spoiling the series, he obviously starts off with a fire, then using the fire he heats up seawater for salt, and then clay for pottery. See, they purposefully build on top of each other like Legos, or Lepins if your mom bought them in the local Asian market. Having said that, story alone wasn't enough to convince me especially in 2021. Like, seriously, if he's not reincarnated as a slime, or a vending machine, or as a sex worker, then I don't want it. But if it's with a mom, then we'll talk. <laughs> Needless to say, utilizing the aspect of science and chemistry is what drew me into the series. And when I say Dr. Stone utilizes science and chemistry, I mean it fucking abuses that shit till it comes out looking like your grandma's old rice cooker. The amount of times that Senku explains an element or molecule almost made me think I had Discovery Channel playing in the background. But if you're looking to watch this anime, don't let this discourage you. This isn't gonna be like your high school chem class with Mr. Wilson. Jessica! The anime actually makes all of this stuff really fun and interesting to learn. Personally, I like how they explain it almost like a video game tutorial would. They use a ton of pictures and visuals to supplement your understanding of the scientific concepts. So if you're someone like me who's slow in the head, I, I mean a visual learner, then this will help you a lot. But as someone who majors in the subject anyway, it was pretty easy to follow. Sulfur, ethanol, hydrochloric acid, all of it was child's play to me. until it wasn't. Shelite? Calcopyrite? Sphalerite? The fuck am I speaking? The Minecraft enchantment table? Believe me when I say that I had to click the back button a couple times just to fully understand some of the things that Senku was explaining. You don't really have to do this. It doesn't really change the story at all. I just did it because my pride wouldn't let me not understand something that I'm supposed to know. But at some point, it felt like all those late nights spent staying up studying just went out the door. I felt defeated and I didn't know what I was looking at anymore, but also it was very exciting because I was seeing and learning something new for the first time, from an anime nonetheless. Oh yeah, did I mention that I failed the class? Aside from the science parts, I really appreciate that the series isn't all too serious. Now you're probably sitting there like, bro, what the fuck do you mean? The entire population is literally stoned. 
I mean, I get that, but the series doesn't really approach it in the way that you think it would. It cracks jokes, makes over-the-top expressions, and generally just knows when to have fun. That's not to say that I don't like or watch shows that are very intense and dramatic. Hell, I followed the AOT manga religiously and waited for chapter releases month after month just to see how it ends. But sometimes, I don't want to watch an Attack on Titan or an Evangelion type show where my butthole is clenched for an entire 20 plus minutes. Sometimes, I just want some lighthearted fun with a little bit of drama, where I can turn majority of my brain off but still be interested to know what happens in the next episode. Dr. Stone does a good job of mixing in the serious moments with the funny ones, and they do it with good enough pacing to where it feels like you're not staying in one place for too long. When it starts to get boring, they'll typically switch the focus to someone else to see what they're doing, and this strategy actually works for them because of how well they wrote the characters. Sure, Senku is the main character and is usually up to something cool and important, but what about Taiju? What's he doing? What about Chrome? What's he up to? Oh yeah, can I just say that I wanted to hate Chrome at first? The moment they introduced him to the show, I thought, oh boy, they added another Zenitsu to the show. I bet he's gonna be entirely useless for majority of the anime, but then... Wait, he's actually useful for once. Yay, oh my god, this boy, you're so cool. Give me your babies. I, I don't know, you get the idea. Look, I'm not shaming Zenitsu fans, and I don't want anyone else shaming Zenitsu fans. Love whatever character you want, I don't give a shit. I'm just saying that I thought Dr. Stone was gonna do the same thing with Chrome, and to my surprise, they didn't. Chrome isn't the smartest character in the show. Senku is. He isn't the most well-versed in fighting either, not by a long shot. But what Chrome has, and it's about to sound anime as fuck right now, he has a goal. He has drive and determination, and he has something to work towards. And every other character in this anime has that to some degree. Even the most annoying ones have their moments of triumph. A lot of people are gonna listen to this, and by my description, are gonna think that this is the most generic shonen anime to ever exist. And to that I say, no, we have My Hero Academia for that. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. The points that I made in this video are just some of the things that I love about Dr. Stone. And it's not meant to be an unbiased bias review or an in-depth analysis on the philosophy of Deku's pubic hair, you can find those everywhere. This is my completely personal and completely biased take on Dr. Stone. And my completely biased opinion is that Dr. Stone is a solid 8 out of 10 anime and there's no show out there that's like it. Oh yeah, and I only watch the most popular animes by the way. Can you tell? Can you tell?